So this last weekend, of course, uh, on the weekends we have two services. On Saturdays we do a four o'clock glory service. Main focus is that we minister to the Lord. And when we minister to the Lord, you know, the Bible says if he's lifted up, then he will draw all men unto him. That's, that's God's automatic response that when he gets lifted up by somebody, he draws. Yeah closer yeah. and um and so that what ha that's what happens during glory services and then sunday uh we we preach and teach as well but this weekend uh i was teaching on a topic and i i had too many scriptures i had three but they were long passages and i just felt like i was taking up way too much time but there's this one passage i really want to um read during curology right now because it's so powerful you know i think uh most of the world even especially christians are confused about their relationship with god the father and then his son jesus christ and his spirit the holy spirit you're going for it well i'm not going all oh, there okay, okay. no no that's like <laughs> that's too like, big that's too right. big I do want to say wrap up for two yeah. hours. <laughs> you know how how God manifests uh, usually is is through the Holy Spirit. He manifests. You know, manifestation is from the Spirit. The Bible says yeah. there's all these different gifts. Uh, sometimes there's a manifestation from His angels because they are ministering spirits as well, servants. Uh, mostly for those who are to inherit salvation. Mm. That's that's the most of their activity. So there are angels of healing, like the angel of healing who stirred the waters and those kinds of things. Um, but when God releases his word, it is the Holy Spirit who manifests the word. So it's very important that you and I have a very healthy relationship with the word of God so that the Holy Spirit has something to manifest. I feel like when it comes to healing, we, we often... Uh, as humans, you know, we get stuck in asking and asking and asking and asking and asking. Um, but we don't really have a very clear picture of the word of God. And the word of God is Jesus Christ, which mm. is amazing. Yeah. You know, he is even the spirit of prophecy. He, Whenever something is declared from the heart of the Father, Jesus does that will of the Father. He manifests it. Um, and the way God manifests is by his word. If you are silent, nothing happens. If God was silent, nothing would have ever happened, right? Everything would have been the same. Uh, the universe would have been void, dark, and empty. He would have not created angels. He would have not created elders. He would have not created beings. He would have not begotten his son, Jesus, but he decided to speak, and there he was. The living word. It's so amazing. And so then he has his spirit who goes forth from him. And uh, that is a message I want to preach on this coming weekend. The impact of the Holy Spirit. But oh, that's good. what's so exciting is that we can participate with the word of God. Mm -hmm. He actually puts the word in our mouths, right? The word of God is in our mouths and something supernatural happens it becomes a flaming sword, the sword of the Spirit. Why the, of the Spirit? Because the Spirit of God works with that. Hmm. The Spirit of God works with the words of our mouths if they are in line with the Word of God. It's so amazing uh, when we do that. And we have a very clear picture of Jesus in Hebrews chapter 1. And I want you to read this with me. And I don't know if you are able to pull up the Amplified Version, but I'm going to read it from the Amplified Version. This is Hebrews chapter 1. Of course, Hebrews was written to the Hebrews. <laughs> and the Hebrews, um, this book is so apostolic and it gives such a big, beautiful picture of faith. A beautiful picture of who Jesus actually is. And it's important that you, you and I know we are, of course, engrafted in, and we are Hebrews, not by, uh, by natural birth, but by the spirit. You know, we were born of the spirit. And so this, uh, this is what it says in Hebrews chapter one. And I want you to read it with me, thinking about the living word of God that produces change in your body, that produce, produces change in your cells. 
at the the just the smallest you know macular what do you call yeah. it levels like tiny tiny minuscule levels like micro yeah micro levels god you know for, for several days when i am praying in the morning he says i'm the god over all cells oh, wow. and i didn't know why he kept saying that until you um you declared over to our church that there is another pandemic coming mm -hmm. we don't know exactly when that's coming but think about this last pandemic don't you all don't we all wish we were better prepared mm -hmm. And the Lord had warned us a couple of years, well, even longer than that, uh, to prepare ourselves. Stockpile faith. How do we do that? Through the Word of yeah. God, right? And acting on the Word of God. Not just being hearers only, but doers of the Word of God. Stockpiling faith. And so I want to encourage you again, if this was just the first of many kinds, right? Which Jesus prophesied, and not just all Coronas, different ones because there's criminals in the world producing all sorts of garbage <laughs> then then the lord always has a way of escape for us that's what he says in his word yeah. he, for the children of god there's always a way of escape with every tribulation with every trial every test that comes our ways even with every temptation the devil brings so whether god allows it or the devil brings it he always provides a way of escape and the way of escape is even our faith. Yeah, that's right. Our faith. And uh, I was going to talk about how faith works by love, but we already should know that, right? It doesn't work through hatred. It doesn't work through anything but love. Faith works by love. But here it says in Hebrews chapter 1, In many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth, so every prophet... Uh, every book of the Bible set forth a portion of the truth. Um, and in different ways that God spoke of old to our forefathers in and by the prophets. But in the la last of these days, he has spoken to us in, this, in the person of his son, whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things. Now stop there. <laughs> He's the lawful owner of all things. Wait. Who's the lawful owner of my eyeballs? Jesus, Jesus. is. Who's the lawful owner of my hormones? Jesus mm -hmm. is. Who's right. the lawful owner of every cell, every, every bone in my body, every hair on my head? Jesus is. That's, That's why right. he likes to count them. Come on. <laughs> he, who doesn't like to count what you own, right? I've got six candles. I've got, you know, <laughs> ten meatballs. Come on. You know exactly how many things you have because... If it's yours, you like to know how many. The Lord is the same. So he's the lawful owner of all things. Why? Because God the Father gave it to him. <laughs> and, and even though the thief came to steal it away, Jesus defeated him. He brought it all back. Whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things. Also by and through whom he created the worlds and the reaches of space and the ages of time now think about those dimensions so jesus uh, owns everything and everything was also made by him it's just amazing it just ima it, it makes me imagine like if you and and our sons were building a house together well, you're showing them how to build it. You're buying all the equipment. You're buying all the lumber and the stone and all that. But you know it's for them, yeah. <laughs> right? You're building. So, so God here is building the world through his son. And it's all for him as well. It's just wonderful. And so he created the worlds and the reaches of space and the ages of time. And he made and produced and built and operated and arranged them in order now we're going to think about our bodies everything and even our thoughts our minds our emotions when there is disorder in our emotions there's a depression right there is melancholy there is sadness or rage whatever whatever is not uh, producing love and joy and peace it's because there is disorder now, if we can understand that Jesus owns all of this, 
we can again say, wait a minute, this belongs to you. Yeah. My mind is yours, the mind of Christ. I have the mind that belongs to Christ, right? I have emotions that belong to Christ. It's the flip side, really, of this revelation. We always think, okay, he has it and he's going to let us have it. But really, it's the other way around, according to Hebrews chapter 1. It's all his. So he um, is the sole expression of the glory of God. Now, let me tell you, whatever is in disorder tonight, Jesus is the one who puts everything in order. So by the authority of his name, there's going to be order again. Good. And he is the light being, the, the outraying of radiance of the divine. He is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature. Upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. Come on. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever studied the universe. I studied the universe a few weeks ago. Uh, I just watched a few videos and I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. I did not know that there are planets in the world that this Earth planet is smaller than a speck of dust compared to. Really? I didn't even know that. Yes. This world, this Earth is so tiny that there are planets out there that they've discovered that are so ginormous that the earth doesn't even look like it exists compared to them. And God, Jesus made all these worlds. <laughs> it's amazing. So God, God invented them, right, in his imagination. It's by his will that all these things are made, but they are made and put in order through Jesus, the living word. Ha, ah, so wonderful. So he, and by his mighty word, they're all kept in order. So we don't need to worry. I don't have to worry that that big giant planet is going to collide with our little stardust yeah. earth, right? When he had, by offering himself, accomplished our cleansing of sins and riddance of guilt, he sat down at the right hand of the divine majesty on high taking a place and a rank by which he himself became as much superior to angels as the glorious name or title which he has inherited is different from from and more excellent than their names come on there are some amazing names out there of angels i love gabriel i love michael right there's all sorts of amazing names of angels and there's people that try to study all those names I was uh, looking at some cute rings the other day online, and there's these rings with all these names of the <laughs> archangels. And I'm thinking, why would you put names of archangels on your fingers when you can have the name above every other name, right? So, <laughs> in your heart and your mind. Yeah, he, he's the name that is superior and outranks every other name. Now there's Lucifer, who was also an archangel. He was he was number one, but Jesus' name far outweighs his name. I love that. So, for to which of his angels did God ever say, "You are my son"? Today I've begotten you, established you in an official sonship relationship <laughs> with kingly dignity. And again, because he's the firstborn, the firstborn son is always the next on the throne, That's right? Funny. He's the ruler. Again, I will be to him a father and he will be to me a son. Moreover, when he brings the firstborn son again into this inhabitable world, hmm. earth, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. Did he, is it habitable? Yeah. Into the habitable world. Habitable. Yeah. Right, so, so Jesus came into this habitable world. There's other worlds that are not habitable. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't yeah. think there are any. Because God made this one specifically for humans to inhabit. And so then, okay. then God brings, brings his son into this habitable world where we are, were. And he says, let all the angels of God worship him. So can you imagine? There's all these angels, you know, in the heavens and here on earth. They're everywhere where humans are, right? And and before the throne of God, and they all worship the sun. Huh? 
So referring to the angels, he says, God who makes his angels winds and his ministering servants flames of fire. But as to the son, he says to him, your throne, O God, is forever and ever to the ages of the ages. And the scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of absolute righteousness, justice, and straightforwardness. <laughs> Think about Jesus' character. He's righteous, he's just, and he's very straightforward. straightforward. I, that reminds me of when a person said, Lord, if you will, heal me. And he just was straightforward. He said, I will. <laughs> it doesn't beat around the bush so, so so many times we are really complicated with god but god is not complicated with us you know the father is the same when you've seen the son you've seen the father the father is like this look i gave you my son stop asking me about everything else because with the son i gave you everything else yeah but what about no everything else is yours including life and death it's all yours the future is yours that's what he says. The future is yours. I mean, the Father sees us in such an elevated light. So when we see Jesus here, it's important that we see Jesus in Hebrews 1 because it elevates me. It elevates me when I think this is my brother, the firstborn, right? Our brother. And this is how God has raised him up. Paul says this thing. He says, you know, when, when Jesus uh, comes back, I don't know what we're going to be because we're going to you know lay down our our this earthly tent right we're going to get a glorified body i don't know what we will be but i do know this when we behold him we will be like him wow. That's all <laughs> that is so intense but <laughs> we can go a hundred different directions with this chapter oh. so uh the scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of absolute righteousness of justice and straightforwardness. You have loved righteousness. You have delighted in integrity, virtue, and uprightness in purpose, thought, and action. Make no mistake that he is not into any lies. He's not part of the liar. You know, he says liars are gonna go to hell, burn in everlasting fire. Satan goes there, his demons go there. So don't believe his lies, because he's the truth. Jesus is the truth. He delights in truth. He delights in integrity. He delights in what is right. And you have hated lawlessness, injustice, and iniquity. Therefore, God, even your God, has anointed you with the oil of exultant joy and gladness above and beyond your companions. And further, you, Lord, did lay the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you remain and continue permanently. They will all grow old and wear out like a garment, like a mantle thrown about oneself. You will roll them up. Come on, doesn't that remind you of when he roll, you know, rolled up his garments in the, in the grave? Now, the next time he rolls something up, he's going to roll up everything that he made, right? You will roll them up, and they will be changed and replaced by others. But you remain the same, and your years will never end nor come to failure. Besides, to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand, associated with me, in my royal dignity, till I make your enemies a stool for your feet? Are not the angels all ministering servants sent out in the service of God for the assistance of those who are to inherit salvation? So... I love two things in this, this passage. One is that Jesus, who lives in me, who lives in you as a child of God, is the living word. By him, all the worlds were framed and made. Nothing that was made was, was not made by him. Nothing. So, so, so everything was made by him. And so when things need to be made, I need you to know that Jesus is the living word and he still creates all the time. Yeah. Everything that is being made, every child that's being born, every animal that's being born, it is all upheld by his great power, by, his, by the power Thank of you. his word. And so, you know, the Bible says that everything is held up by his great power. Every cell, every molecule is held up by his great power. I want you and I not to be afraid of 
cells that are out there that are mutated cells and now they are going into another mutation because when it comes to cells the lord says i am the lord over all cells he can destroy roll them up like he did right and will do again the garments of the heavens he is so mighty that any kind of cell that does not have his approval can completely wither away we have so many promises as children of god that when we declare things over cells that he backs that up come on it's by the authority of the name when peter did his first miracle uh after the church was born right jesus goes up to heaven jesus is taken up in the clouds the angels are saying why are you standing around looking up in the clouds he's going to come back the same way basically saying he just told you the Great Commission. Why are you looking in the clouds? Go go get busy with it. <laughs> so, you know, they're having their Sabbath. And then right after that, they go to, or during the Sabbath, I think, they go to the temple. And at the gate, beautiful, Peter sees this man who needs healing. And Peter tells him to get up and walk. He pulls him up by the hand. And the guy goes leaping and dancing and praising God. And then people are saying, oh my goodness, look what you did. And he said, why are you astonished? It's not by our great power we've done it. It's by the name of Jesus. Yeah, the name of Jesus. What is he saying? It's by the name that I invoked of the one who upholds everything. Every cell is under his authority. The cell in these legs were invigorated. They were paralyzed from birth. Now they are invigorated. Isn't that wonderful? What was lacking is made complete. What was wrong was removed. And that's the power that resides in me. That's why it says in the Bible that he is the hope of glory. What is the hope of glory? Christ in us. That we, because he's in us, he never leaves us nor forsakes us. We can invoke his name directed to a certain thing. We can command something and he is the power that causes it to happen yeah the power that upholds all things the power that created everything lives in us now this is something that you can magnify the lord with this chapter hebrews uh one and you magnify the will of the father that he wanted okay. this grandiose plan what a plan and how who are we anyway that he want, wanted to include us in this outrageous plan right it's better than the disney movies that when a high school american high school girl finally finds out that she's really a crown princess it's better than that story <laughs> <laughs> it's much better than that story we are princesses and princes over the whole universe and all the ages to come because Jesus went first. Why did he go first? Why did he come into the earth? So that he could bring us all along. He could have kept his position. He already had it. He already had it. He left that glory, came into the habitable world so that he could deliver all of us out of slavery and bring us into royalty. And that royalty has already begun. And I want you and I to just elevate him in us, elevate the living word, that if he's the creator of all living things with the Father, in conjunction with the power of the Holy Spirit to manifest things, then you and I are partners with that great power. And I want us to use that, amen. We want to magnify when we wake up in the morning and you're, you're believing for a change in your body or in your emotions, your heart, even your brain, maybe there's things you know, that you were born with that are not right, then, then, then you magnify this great power of God because he is the God over all cells. Yeah. If you are afraid because you've been looking at the news too, lo too long, right? Uh, you didn't actually uh, know these things before you watched the news, but now you're terrified. Now stop pumping that information into your mind. Start pumping the truth into your mind. That truth is there is no greater power than the power that we have through the name and authority of Jesus Christ. It's not just the name. It's the name of the one who upholds the entire universe. 
the one who is upholding with his word, not even his hands. He doesn't have to do with his hands. He has the voice. He has the name. Right? He said it one time. You stay there. You stay there. Come on. And they're still there. Thousands of years later, they're still hanging. That giant, giant planet that we are a speck compared to is right now hanging in the universe because the living word spoke it to do that. That to be that big and to be in that spot directly and to not move from that spot. I love that. Now that is the God who will change our cells. Amen. That's the God who will change what is lacking. That is the God who will make up and create what is lacking in us and who will destroy what is wrong. Who will destroy cancer cells, corona cells, and every other vile cell. And he will release healthy cells, beautiful red blood cells, beautiful white immune cells, beautiful hormones, beautiful uh, bone structure cells and, and, and cartilage and brain cells. Maybe some of you have had accidents and, you know, maybe you've hit your head one too many times. <laughs> Come on, God can create new brain cells and it's not that hard. Here we see so many examples in the Bible that just by one word, one word, be healed, right? Be healed. That's all Jesus said. And they were completely made whole. He didn't have to say a thousand different things. Now you little cells go over to the left and you go over here. No, just by one command. It's so powerful, isn't it? Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> it's interesting um, because you're talking about the fact that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, yes. So he, what he started he's faithful to complete. So he created you in perfection. Yeah. And the goal is to bring you back to that, not to yes. bring you to a place of destruction or confusion. or. But his goal is if there may be some things that hit you as you're going, but what he designed, his original intent, is to bring you to a place of health. Yes. And you can, you can access that authority, cooperate with that authority yes. by your words yes we were we were i was ministering to a lady this weekend who's been really struggling in her body she's had some things happen and mm-hmm. and when she came to me she was listing out all of the symptoms and i was getting overwhelmed with the symptoms yeah. I mean, i'm a man of faith but there's a point where you can actually <laughs> you can take in so much and your humanity starts to feel sorry mm-hmm. instead of feeling compassion feeling pity is different than compassion Right. Pity doesn't guarantee that you're going to actually have authority, no. but compassion does. Mm-hmm. Compassion is the access to the gift of healing mm-hmm. and the anointing of healing. So there was a point where I started to feel sorry for her instead of feeling authority for her. And so I said, wait, let's stop. Let's stop here because you give me so many, so many words of, of symptoms that I'm now thinking about your symptoms. I'm not thinking that there, but now I'm getting so many. It's like there's a lot of. Lot, lot to try to carry here yeah. and it's overwhelming i said yes. so now what we're going to do because i know what it does to a person's soul the reason we don't we encourage not to watch news and we encourage not to watch anything that really affects your soul to to protect it now there's things that you know i watch action movies a lot some people can't watch action movies but i can watch mm-hmm. action movies because i don't mind the explosion i know the makeup it's and all it's just that. fun for it's, you it's interesting it's and i and i sit there and i go well, how did they do that right and but the fact is is there's some people that think, oh it's so real well you have to know that you have it's to know real. where your soul what your soul can handle right but i said to her i said let's for every symptom you give me now give me two things of faith mm-hmm. so if you tell me a symptom you got to tell me two faith two faith things two words and i said because these this is all a battle of words Yes. It's a fight of words. We're fighting and battling with words. So uh, if you think that God's words are, are just in the past, he has no words for you today and he has no words for you tomorrow while the enemy can continue to speak, right. then God is on the on the lower end. God is is, is missing. Less influence. He, he does, yeah. And so the only way his words are and is that are going to live is that we continue to speak them. And we echo those words. It's a part of the word sound when it says that there was a sound that came like a like a sound that came like a wind Mm -hmm. that entered into the earth. That word sound is the word echo. And that means the echo from God of God came into us that we need to continue to say it didn't say a wind came, but it was a sound like a wind. So the sound entered into us. So we if we don't speak. 
If we don't speak what God says, then that sound, which is absolute authority, the only way his words continue to live and continue to create in the earth is that someone echoes what he's saying. Someone speaks what he's saying. So you and I have to echo that. The thing that is really interesting is that there are things that are trying to destroy the echo in us, that are trying to to get us to question and doubt whether or not that is the same sound that God would have, or whether or not that was the same thing that God would say, or the same things that, that, you know. So we have to actually know that that echo is being constantly addressed by the by the strategies of the enemy giving new new words new thoughts new Different. sounds n- n- mm-hmm. you know and giving new meaning to to the things that we would associate in the past this morning with our men we were praying through um you know the thoughts towards us thoughts of mm-hmm. good good and not of evil yeah to to peace and, and in inspect future. if you yeah. open the future and and the thing that kept hitting me is the fact that the devil is not a better thinker than god no he doesn't think as he's not as more as strategic. He's not as I mean, so all the thoughts that God has towards us are superior to any thought that the enemy could ever, yes. ever think. Yes. So how does he ever get it into our lives is he gets us to think on his channel. Yes. He gets us to think on his plane and we stop echoing what God's thoughts wow. are to us that would be, then create a new space and create a new environment wow. for us. We can't do, as God said, to stockpile faith so that you can create the world you want to live in. You have to create the world you want to live in. If you want to live in a world, create it. You have to speak That's it. You have powerful. to declare yeah. it that, the, that he's the same. That all of this stuff was created that way, and it all responds to that same thing. Yeah. So you think about the, the, the time that Jesus is on the boat. He, the, the waves are crashing against the boat. It uses the terminology in the Greek. It gives the idea in Greek that there's a demonic storm that's rising, and that Peter is going... He's going, okay, now there's something that's happening here. Jesus, don't you care? And he tries Mm -hmm. to shake him and wake him. And Jesus comes off his pillow and calms the the sea and the storm. And he says, and then the next, you know, they end up on the the place where the gather, the, 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 you know, the, the, the dweller in the tomb, the tomb, the, uh, what are the, the gatherings, the the lunatic that's there. And he's been, you know, he's been, he's been over there, you know, breaking, breaking his chains and living amongst dead things. And, himself. And, but, yeah. you know, you think about it, this is the same, Peter's no different than this guy. And, and Jesus actually came through the same matrix that everything yeah. else is. How come Peter's soul and, and or God's, God's word yes. in, in manifestation of word in Jesus' life and, the and God's manifestation yes. of word in the Peter's life and God's manifestation of word in the demonic life, we all have come through the same matrix. We've all come through the same thing. Jesus didn't have it. He Mm -hmm. still came through mother. I came through mother. Peter came through. So what's the difference is what the enemy's been allowed to to do with our soul. Yeah, and accept it, right? Because one accepts it and one doesn't. So you accept what your soul will tolerate. You accept what's what your soul believes is true in fact and so so when when so it really comes down to if i don't believe that word that you're saying then i can't repeat it no matter how much i believe it's probably good for someone else if it's i feel like it's 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 not it's an imposter syndrome if i say it if i say it it's imposter i know it's true i believe it's true but i know what i've done i know where i live and so i can't really quote that with absolute authority because you have to be completely persuaded of it in order to have absolute authority. You have to be persuaded. And so what what the problem is, is the enemy then gets in and he starts to destroy our soul, which then means that we fight and we question certain words. So I'll say the word prosperity in one group and that work, that per, that group will go. Oh, we don't believe in that. Well, that's now they have they have they have taken on a belief in their soul that won't allow them to embrace the actual release thoughts of the of, God, of the yeah. thoughts of God into the realm of prosperity. Same with healing. I'll go to some some places and I'll say, Hey, God wants to heal. Oh, that's mm. too difficult. God didn't heal. What happened? It's in the soul. If it doesn't go through the soul, it can't come in through the body. It can't come into your life. It's the way a person who says, well, if you just ate differently in more organic or more healthy, if you just took care of your body, then that would take care of some of the natural 
natural changes. Your body, uh, basically, new cells are created every seven years, right? Mm -hmm. So your, your skin is, is, your whole body, it just reproduces the scar. It takes only it, seven days. It reproduces, it reproduces everything, mm -hmm. but that's just natural. So mm -hmm. if you then start today to eat better, then in seven years, that which was ailing you would be rewritten. It would already start to rewrite the good code, the good nutrition, and you would go into an automatic health. It doesn't happen. You may think, wow. well, I didn't feel better in, 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 in two weeks, but we're working towards a seven year process. Wow. You will actually have new liver, new kidney, new lungs or better, right? Because whatever yeah. you start today, you it's going to manifest in the next seven. And if you notice in revival, there's a super cycle of revival of every seven years. So what we start today, we're going to actually see that coming to the cell cellular surface in the next seven years. What we next encountered generation. in in 20 in 2020 started seven years, seven years. And the Lord told us something. He told us, he said, the wind, whatever you build now, you're going to live in it. He, t he says, you have yes. five years. What you build today, what you say today, you're going to live in it five years from now. This is what he told us. Yeah. And so we, we realized that that is true. Now, this is just on the natural yeah. level. Now, imagine if you can activate this on the spiritual level. Yeah. On the spiritual level where you're going to now be able to speak things at the level of Jesus. Now, remember, God created it all with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. The word, the word manifested mm -hmm. in the earth. He created it all. So it's all used to responding to it. Yeah. Whatever it was birthed by, it's going to respond to. Whatever it was started with is going to respond to it. It's the faithful to finish or faithful to complete it. But why do you have to be faithful with completion if it's if it's in the first day stage? It's because he has to keep keep it in that state of being he has to be faith filled all the way through it to bring it to its completion to its end so the reason i want to wanted to go that whole you know bring this into the realm of the gadarean the, the the guy living in the tombs the demoniac living in the tombs couldn't get his breakthrough because his soul wouldn't allow him yeah his soul that's... wouldn't allow him he couldn't even agree with the right word i mean he came down and he worshiped immediately because there was some form of worship in his soul. But even when he worshiped, he didn't know how to receive freedom, but he knew how to worship. That means somewhere in his soul, he had the belief system of worship. Can you imagine? That's how he was able to worship. Even though he's been up there breaking stuff and, and demonic, you know, all this stuff is happening. But somewhere, that means you can have a soul that is damaged in one area, but still healthy in another area and still manifest wrong living wrong living he was manifesting I, I'm, I just want to teach this to myself over and over he was living up amongst the dead stuff but he had within him the ability to know how to worship jesus when he showed up now that's powerful we have a lot of people who go to church who love god but they struggle with things and they don't know how to get their healing or they don't know how to get their prosperity or they don't know how to get their stuff together and it's, it's it, they they want it they desire it, but they don't know how and and i want to tell you that there's a there's a fracture there's something happening in the soul that may prevent you from your next healing. There's some time I'm encountering with people, I'm thinking, I just told you exactly how to do it. And then you repeat to me exactly why you can't do it. Now, that means that you're not, it's not that you're not listening because you're repeating to me what you should do. But the fact is, there's something in your soul that says that it won't work for you. There's a problem with you. Mm -hmm. And the, the, when the Bible says, uh, the, the, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack, right? I shall not want. We looked at that last week. And he makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. And then it said, I said, I was going to come back this week and talk to you about this next part. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. Why, why does he need to restore my soul? First, he's going to show that he's provisional. He's protector. He's taking care of me. And then I need my soul restored. The word restore of the soul, I'm just going to give you two, but it's, I was actually shocked because I thought it would be just a couple of words. But the, the deeper you, the, 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 this word is, has a lot of uses to it. And it has a lot of, lot of, lot of is broad. And, and I don't see that as a negative. I see that as a powerful thing. It has a, it's, it's wide open. There's a lot of uses for this word restore restore there's a lot of places of application that he's going to restore a lot of ways to uh, to apply it so look look what it says here it says um the first definition in this word the greek the hebrew word sorry uh with it is shuv which is would be to turn back 
He's going to turn my soul back. He's going to turn it back to what it used to be. So what would happen if this guy did in one aspect of his soul, he had the ability to worship that and, and then somewhere some trauma or something happened and then he lost an aspect of his soul to be able to control and it went into an animalistic nature. Well, the, when you have a restored soul, it turns it back as if you never were an animal and it allows it to be reunited again in a holistic. There's so many times we've encountered people where they love God, but they just can't get their breakthrough. And I believe it's part of the soul needs to be restored. They need a restoration in the soul. Some of you, you can't, you haven't been able to embrace your healing. It's not that Jesus didn't heal you. It's not that he doesn't want you to be healed, but there's a, there's a leanness or a fracture or something in the soul mm -hmm. that he's going to help you go, I can now echo what God says because yeah. I don't see myself in this state anymore. I see myself in a healed, healthy, whole state. That's the problem. The problem is when I talk to people and I say, okay, this is what God says about you in the word. They say, but no, I've, I've had this forever. This I've had Benny Hinn and so many people pray for me. And then I, that, 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 that part of their soul, they have given over to an idea. They've given over to a mindset. It's not mm -hmm. over, given over into God's echo. It's been given over to an ideology, an ideology that contradicts what the Bible says. So they haven't been able to embrace it. So that part of the soul needs to be restored. When you're restored there, then it's going to come back at, to a, a solid place. Uh, it, this, another one is the word that would, is going to bring back to me that which was carried away, that which was drawn away, which means it's going to be drawn back to me. Another, another word is to fetch home again, to fetch it home. So when God's going to restore your soul, you, when, when, I, when, I, when you pray for things, you may not notice it, but I want you to pay attention. When you pray for things, let's say you say, man, I really need my bills paid. I need my bills paid or I need my body healed. I want my, my back. And then you go, God, how come you haven't healed me yet? And then you, you may have some things that flow into your mind. They go, oh, I did this or this, or, you know, my grandmother told me maybe it's not going to happen all the time. Or you have all these things. That's the stuff that needs to be fetched back because it's given over to a circumstance. It's given over to a moment. Mm -hmm. It's given over to a moment in the past or a moment, a circumstance with someone, and you have to fetch it back into this moment where it says completion, all things are gonna be completed and finished by God. Don't let it mm -hmm. stay divided. Don't, be, don't, don't, don't allow that to be a leanness in your, in your soul. Mm. And so, huh, which, which is really important that you have that, that power of, of restoration. Uh, he says, um, you know, the scripture said that he's going to restore my soul. Then it says that he will guide me into paths of righteousness for his namesake. So why does he have to restore my soul before I can embrace all the righteousness that he's given to me in the name of Jesus? All, there's a, the, every level and every form of righteousness has been delivered to me in the name of Jesus, but I can't be guided into it. I can't be led into it until the path. I can't even see and recognize the pathway of rightness of getting my, my body right and getting my, my, my life right until I have a restoration of soul. So why haven't you been able to get healed yet? It's because we need you to get restored in your soul. We need your soul to be completely healed so that you can accept the right guidance. Uh, there's a lot of people I try to help with guidance, even myself. I, I, there's, things, there's areas in my life that I'm like, Lord, I really want you to give me instruction. I really want you to give me insight I, on this. But I have, there's certain areas that I, I, that I find, mm, when, it, when I ask for this, you speak to me right away. It's never a hindrance. It's like so easy. I don't have a problem hearing in that. I don't have a problem knowing that. But then when I ask for this other thing, I'm thinking, you know, it doesn't come. I did, and, and I realized that maybe it's because I have a soul issue there that needs to be restored because God may be speaking to me there, but because my soul thinks it's hard, soul my soul faith. thinks yeah. it's, it's difficult, my soul has been injured there, or I have heard teaching that has caused my soul to, to think that it's going to take longer than it does. Well, over here, no one's ever told me I couldn't hear God there, or it'd be difficult, or I don't have any past story. I don't have any other history of it. 
So, so then it's easy for me to believe that his name is going to activate. I'm, I'm going to be able to have access to his name there. Wherever you have access to his name, for his name's sake, that means authority is there. You don't use his name in, in a place. He wants you to use his name in a place where you have a story that said, look, it, I used the name of Jesus yeah. and I have victory. That's for his name's sake. Yeah. It's going to give glory to his name. It's going to give praise to his name. And so when you realize that he restores my soul is the key to the guidance guiding me into the paths of righteousness. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a complete right body, a complete right mind, a complete right relationship, a complete right guidance. You can't have all of these levels. Now think, think with me. It says he's going to lead me into pastures. He's going to, he's going to, sorry, he's going to lay, cause me lay down, which means he's going to take me there. He's going to lead me beside still waters. He's going to restore my soul. And then he's going to lead me and he's going to lead me. If we follow down, then all of a sudden it says, then he's following goodness and mercy are following. That means something has happened so powerful in my life to where I don't, have, I don't need to be completely led by every step that there's a restoration of my soul. I've now found the path of righteousness. I'm now able to guide myself and not guide myself without him, but I'm able to walk so close to hand in hand that I'm able to now manifest his namesake as I go forward. Now goodness and mercy are going to follow me. Wow, I just want you to know that there's a restoration that's coming to your soul that you're not like a little bird that's going to be just up there waiting for the next little feeding, but you're going to be able to go on the hunt and move out on your own and step out with God with authority. And that's where you go from someone needing healing to someone giving healing, yeah. someone needing breakthrough, someone giving breakthrough, someone needing prosperity to giving prosperity is because there's a restoration of your soul. Good, yeah. Your next breakthrough is going to happen because your soul is going to be completely healed, yeah. completely healed. When your soul is healed. Now, there's something that's uh, that's used in so many. It's usually used in a wrong relationship. It's, in, you know, you look you, you look in, in the world uses it as, as a is, is, is a unhealthy relationships. And, and I think it has to do with relationships or un positive and negative relationship this word because you can see it in the scripture the positive and the negative there's a positive relationship with david and 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 um jonathan where jonathan's soul was knit to david that's a soul tie he knit his heart he knit his soul now that's a positive in order prosperous soul tie then there's the unhealthy that are leading to div divisive and destructive soul ties. Now, I want you to know that today, a part of being healed is getting an improper soul tie healed, breaking and severing something that pulls you this way when you're supposed to go that way. Mm -hmm. When you're supposed to go towards healing, you're thinking about the last time you prayed for healing and it didn't work. That's an improper soul tie. You have a, a wrong relationship with healing. When you thought about going this way, God, I want you to do this, but I, you didn't pay my bill last time. So that's an improper relationship with prosperity and blessing. And so you've got to get your soul healed. We don't want to know why all of that happened right now. We want to just know how do I get my soul healed so that I can recognize the paths of righteousness again so that I can bring glory to your name. Because it doesn't bring glory to the shepherd if I have lame, if I'm lame, if I have a broken leg, if I have, you know, messed up, scarred body, if I'm, if I'm damaged, then the shepherd does not get glory. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that honors his name. If I say, oh, that, you know, that shepherd, you know, MacGyver, Shep, that, he's shepherd, that, they, they belong to shepherd MacGyver. Man, they, they look mangy. They're really messed up, Mangy. right? He, he's, they, they, their teeth are not taken care of, and they're they're all they're all like matted up, and man, they they're all limp, and they're lame, and they're all shrunk, shrunk, sh you know, shriveled up because they haven't eaten. Man, that MacGyver, that that shepherd MacGyver is really a bad shepherd. Well, this is what this thing is, it says: The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. Mm -hmm. That if you can't give glory to His name, if you are a lame sheep walking around saying, Jesus is my shepherd. Well, you look messed up. I don't want to become a part of that, that herd. I'm not going to become a part of that flock because look at you. You don't represent well. Well, that's only because my soul doesn't know that that's, I, I worship him, but so did the demoniac. I, but there's all, all aspects of life that need to shift when you get, when you get a hold of your new shepherd, mm -hmm. right? And you allow him to, to, to develop.
in you, right? So God wants us to realize that that what you do, if you tolerate sickness because there's a belief system there, it, t- it says something about our shepherd. Now, you got to understand the level of our shepherd. He is so intense. He's really intense about this. What do you mean? Now, I'm not saying that if you have a, something that you're growing and you're going to, you have to grow in your soul of being developed, right? We have to develop. I have things that I have to develop in, but when you develop in it, use it. Use the echo mm-hmm. inside of you to bring change Yeah. because God is going to echo now, but think about it. He, he demanded, he demanded for his priests that they had a certain way of looking and representing him, body, soul, and spirit. He had a certain way for the offering that was coming to represent him. No spot, no wrinkle, no blemish. Those were the sheep that were being offered. You are supposed to be a living sacrifice. That means alive every day with the same standard. Yeah. With the same standard as a sacrifice that could be laid down and be an acceptable wow. offering every single day. So you and I, we should be every day living in a constant mm-hmm. increasing mm-hmm. newness of life mm-hmm. to where, but what's the problem? What's the challenge? It's there. It's That's the path of righteousness that I get better and better every day. I get stronger and stronger every day. I get healthier and healthier every, every, every day. I hear people say, you know, well, well, that person was this age. And you know, this is what happens. You know, when you hit, you know, you hit 65, 70, 80, a person start automatically needs to start breaking down because that's how cars work. Well, we're living organism, living with God every day. Mm-hmm. We're not supposed to be breaking down in Christ Jesus, maybe outside of Christ Jesus, but Christ made a new path of righteousness. We don't have to go blind at 70. We don't have to lose our hearing at, at 80. No. We don't have to lose our, our spine to osteoporosis at, at, at 85 and 90. Right. We don't have to lose our bodies to the things that the elements of this world are in control. We're seated in heavenly places. And so seated in those heavenly places, don't you think that you and I, if we have the path of righteousness, that path is gonna get us to the place of where we're we're seated. If I'm seated in perfection, then my body should be quickened. The Bible says it is quickened by the anointing that's in me to cast off all mortality. So my eyes are not going to get worse. My ears are not going to get worse. Right. My, my, my heart's not going to get worse. Well, what if it does? It's only because I have a stronghold. I have something that's holding my, I have a soul tie to my grandmother's heart, heart, heart diagnosis. Or I have a stronghold to what I see happening in my family. That stronghold needs to be broken. I need to have a restored soul so I no longer I see that as a true. part of my destiny. That's yeah. not my destiny. There's things that come to me on a, on a weekly basis. And I'm thinking, thank you, Lord, that that's not my destiny. Mm-hmm. My destiny is not that. And so I don't embrace it. I use a different echo. Amen. I'm not going to let that echo in my chambers. I'm going to have a different echo yes. out of my chambers into this circumstance. Why? But I'm constantly having to renew my soul because the Bible says yes. if you want to walk guided into the path of righteousness, which means I still have to be humble and submissive to him but yeah. I can do it better with a restored soul. I yes. don't argue with him. Right. I don't complain. I don't bicker when I have a restored soul. It, I have a complaint and an argument and all of these wrestling when I don't have a restored soul. So hopefully this mm-hmm. is helpful. Your healing comes closer to you in the paths of righteousness. Yes. Uh, everything that righteousness is everything that Jesus lived in, everything that Jesus would do, yes, everything that Jesus yeah. would work and the way Jesus will walk in your life, if Jesus was in you completely, if you if he said, sit over here and watch me live your life, how would he live it? How would he be? Would he wake up the same way that you wake up? Would he do would he have the same ailments that you have? No. At that point, your mind is being renewed. When you go, Jesus wouldn't like live like this. Jesus wouldn't walk like this. Jesus wouldn't do that. Now he's become my complete in sample, my example of how to live this out. So, and not to put you guys all to sleep, but we're gonna go ahead and and get you living in the newness of your soul. Because that's the key component to being guided. Yes. I I love to say it. I started saying it years ago. I'm a guided person. Mm -hmm. I have a guided life. I remember when the day I decided I was gonna start saying it. I don't even, I don't know what activated, but I realized 
I'm guided. I'm not going to be a person who knows where to go. Yeah. I don't because a guy, a guy, a guided person doesn't know where to go. They need a guide. Yeah. But and a yet, righteous person has steps that are led. that are ordered of yeah. the Lord. Yes. Yeah. And so when you realize that uh, the the life that you choose, you if you choose to be guided, it's not easy because you have to wait and you have to wait for your guide to tell you what to do. Uh, but I think that you there's a better life to be guided, and I just want to be more guided. And so there was a part of a restoration of my soul, that whole statement. I'm a guided person. I have a, I live a guided life. I'm guided by God. Well, that was a different kind of approach. And so you know, choose choose the life you're going to live in, and when you choose that, you will you will um, you will start to live a victorious life. You'll start to walk in into the things that that God has for you. We're all guided, guided by God. And he says he wants to guide me into the path of righteousness. I love this Psalm 23. I'm just getting so much out of it. He wants to lead me. He wants to guide me. And then he'll guide me and lead me. And he'll take me. The path of righteousness are laid out in the next few verses of what you can eat and what you can, how you're going to live, the prosperity of your life. And then he says now, is, now he, what he's put in your life is now going to start following you. Man, that's a big transition. I want that. Where first you're like, I want to be guided. The next, you know, it's like, now I, man, you got, you have this down so well. Goodness and mercy. It's going to start following you. <laughs> you go from being led to followed. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful. That's the blessing chasing you down. Yeah. So I'm going to pray for your soul. And you can, I don't know if we have people who have written in for other things, but I want to pray for your soul to be able to receive your healing. Yeah, let us know what you need in the comments, what you need to be healed from, and then we'll pray. And some people probably wonder why we actually spend an hour teaching and preaching the word on healing and different aspects of it. And, you know, Oral Roberts and both T.L. Osborne said that you get what you preach. Mm -hmm. So if we preach healing to you, you we expect you to be healed. <laughs> mm -hmm. We don't preach healing to you for, you for you to be wondering. We'd say it strictly for you to be healed. So in the name of Jesus, I pray yes. for you to be healed in your soul, that, that the leanness of your soul would be healed, that you would be restored, that any aspects that were driven, given to your family, to improper relationships, improper study, improper revelations, uh, improper things. Uh, if you're in the medical field, I want you to know that there, you're going to have a balance. You're going to have a balance to bring you have to battle. You have to battle to bring some of that which you've learned into the kingdom of God, uh, because it, there's a real ba battle between what you've learned in the natural mm -hmm. and what you gain in the spirit. And so I say, restored soul. There's aspects you've got to bring into this kingdom of God mm -hmm. that have no reference to what you learn in the medical field. And we release the grace of God to you. We release the health and life of God to your soul, so that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers let the restoration of god's hand in healing for you come to you in jesus name continue to pray that in your life yes. amen so okay quite a bit of uh prayer requests prayer for deb's uh daughter and husband they're both sick uh eric physical Thank healing tara yep the we soul uh lindsay pray for jolie's brother he had a bleeding stroke um healing for your lungs thank you for your lungs healing uh emotional physical yep drug addictions thank you thank you Lord. blood sugar thank you we deal with that don't two know years. what to do we thank you, Father, that um, with all of these, yeah, the great physician. With when we, the doctor that does know is the great physician. Yes, the Bible calls him Jesus. He's the great physician. Yes. So we thank you for Eric. We thank you for all of these that yes. have mentioned their their needs, uh, from the blood sugar to the lung so problem to the it. two years of the physical issue that's being cha that's challenging. Uh, we thank you, Father, that you are healing now that yes. you are the healer you are the great physician mm -hmm. so not only are you giving the right doc diagnosis right prognosis but we release healing and we declare from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet yes. be healed be healed be healed we command all of the symptoms to go 
we command all of the 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 problems in the stomach to be healed i just see uh there's some the problem in the stomach just a uh, imp, uh, just the irritable, irritation, irritable flow. We release the grace of God to you in yeah. Jesus' name. We are, we speak to your lungs to be healed. Any any congestion to be open, and we command you to be healed in Jesus' name. Yes. We thank you, Father. Uh, we thank you for the the power of your Spirit yes, that's moving, Lord. and that the work that you're you're releasing right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Be made whole. Be made whole. The Wholeness. name of Jesus. Amen. And there may be a couple more open open doors here, open opportunities for you to jump into a healing room if you want more specific healing, one on one, more specific min ministry needs. Mm -hmm. uh, we thank you for for Rebecca. We thank you for the grace of God for her heart yes. to be healed in the name of virtue, Jesus. Virtue, Hallelujah. Virtue. Yes. Lord. Physical healing for neck and back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Need thank all you, over Lord. healing. Yes, thank God. you, Father, that you are the healer. God, just God. receive. Just say thank you. And when you say thank you, it just draws into you. There's yes. virtue that's moving yes. right now. There's virtue that's thank coming you, to Lord. you. We send, we, we send the word and we say be healed in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Patricia's thank you. Husband's brain also be made whole. There's a there's name. there's bacteria, a bacteria thing um, mm -hmm. that someone's being healed of. It's a bacteria. Mm -hmm. And it's working at that those lower levels, the cellular levels, breaking. Uh, it's breaking like chains. But I, I just release in the name of Jesus that yes. bacteria to be Life. healed. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Healthy Hallelujah. bacteria. Yeah. Only in Jesus' name. Yeah. The name. gut, brain, bless, and breakthrough. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, be strong, say it everyone. All together by His stripes, I am healed. Yes. Yes, and just and you you receive it by saying it by stripes. Speak I am the healed. Word of God. That's the echo of God, and yes. you just say thank you, Lord. We thank, thank you, you for Lord. we receive that power. We thank you for your son being healed. Amen. We thank Hallelujah. you that his life has been been spared. Right Amen. All the all of the breakthrough, little little cow, Lord. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Healing, 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 healing. Continue, and if you if our prayer if our if our rooms are full, prayer rooms are are full tonight. Sign up for next week and then post post get become a part of. Um, Thank you. For become a part of our our, our group. Yeah. Uh, our prayer. What do you call it? It's the healing room. Yeah, Zoom group. There's a Facebook group. You can yeah. become a part of that. Even if if you sign up tonight, you'll be invited into that. I believe. And uh, you can share and start sharing your breakthroughs and start sharing any any other needs because there are people there they who have been healed that pray also. So there's and a lot of prayer opportunity, yeah. and uh, we thank you for the we grace. We plead of God. the blood of Jesus on all the families represented here, all of our families. The blood of the Lamb makes us completely hands off to the devil. Jesus has given us power over all the power of the devil, and by no means shall anything harm us. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for meeting thank us here every Samuel, week. Lord. That we um, we can come and share God's goodness with you. Yes. And we, we appreciate you. Let's God keep bless coming you. together. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Blessings.